Shalom family. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this disaster that's going on in Florida right now. And, and you know, it's amazing. It's dealing with the orange crops. And actually, a lot of the citrus fruit that's in Florida, for instance, uh, lemons also. But um, a few years ago, if you remember the hurricane that came through Florida that damaged the orange crop, I want to play that video for you because when you look at what happened then and then you say to yourself, well, man, this this is something going on with this because now something else is has attacked the orange crop. But I want you to see this video here. Uh, this actually happened um, about two to three years ago. Most years, Florida supplies about half of America's orange juice, but Irma wiped out much of this year's crop in just a few hours. It's another body blow for farmers who battled a devastating crop disease for years. Here's Carter Evans. We're down about a foot from where we were earlier this morning. More than 60% of Paul Metter's crop is either in the water or in the dirt. Thousands of trees were ripped out of the ground by Hurricane Irma's blistering winds. And it's not salvageable either. Not any part of it. This would normally would not be harvested until April or May. His crop was destined to become orange juice, but now with much of it floating in three feet of flood water, it looks more like an orange soup. As you can see by the amount of fruit on the ground, this is more than an average crop. This uh, was a banner year. It was a banner year. So if we had delivered this crop in, we probably would have been back in the black for the first time in a very long time. But all that fruit made these trees top heavy, pushovers for Irma. And trees left in the water for more than three days could also rot or die. Metter's losses could be up to $9 million, and he's not the only one. We have 125,000 acres of citrus groves in this area. What percentage of those crops do you think was damaged? All. Every acre of that 125,000 acres. Gene McAvoy is an agriculture expert with the University of Florida. 95% of the 95 oranges? 95% of the oranges in Florida, particularly in this region, go for juice. What's going to happen to the orange juice market? You're going to pay a lot more for orange juice. Now, growers tell me that these trees were subjected to so much stress during the hurricane that even some of this remaining fruit may not survive. The damage here is so bad that the Secretary of Agriculture is now planning a trip to Florida to see it for himself. Anthony? Carter Evans in the Orange Groves of South Florida. Thanks. As you can see in this um, video, um, Hurricane Irma literally devastated Florida's orange crops. I mean, it literally just leveled. It, it was just acres and acres, miles and miles of orange crops that just covered and just flooded with water and trees knocked over by the heavy winds and everything. And so you say to yourself, man, now this was a couple of years ago, you know, but now there's something new that is attacking the orange crops in Florida. And I want you to see this because when I first saw it, I said, man, this is a strange thing that's going on, right? There's a bug that came from China. And this bug is literally transmitting a disease to the orange trees that's in Florida and other citrus plants. Take a look at this video. Orange juice from Florida. A day without orange juice is like a day without sunshine. Still a popular morning routine, but the $9 billion industry synonymous with the Sunshine State is in serious jeopardy. A disease called citrus greening is ruining the fruit and killing the trees. Growers like Adam Birchenall discovering... This grove's dead. Yep, they're pretty much sick and dying more and more. The grove his grandfather planted, CB's citrus, 319 acres near Tampa, is now mostly a ghost grove. You know, you put so much effort, so much love and money into something and it still just dies and withers away. It's, it's hard to not be pessimistic. For more than a decade, scientists trying to stop a disease that is the leading reason Florida's citrus industry saw a 70% drop in orange production over the last 15 years. 
The problem begins with a tiny bug called an Asian citrus psyllid. When the psyllids feed on the citrus plants, the bacteria gets injected into the tree and then it moves uh, through the vascular system. Once that bacteria reaches a tree's roots, it's game over. And growers say replanting their groves with newly developed disease-resistant trees is too costly a solution. It's harvest season in Florida, so when you shake a tree, some of the fruit naturally just drops off. But growers say because of the disease, the fruit that drops is as soft as fresh baked bread. The infected trees bear fruit that in some cases has 50% less juice, causing Florida orange juice prices to jump almost 19% in just the last year. And why more and more... So as you see, this disease is crazy. I mean, these bugs, they're spreading this disease through these orange um, trees. It's just crazy. See, it, it gets in and it spreads as lava and then it, it, it's, it sends some type of disease into the, I guess, into the roots of the plant and it destroys the plant within two to three years. It destroys the orange tree completely. And so this is like, man, like crazy. You see, you said, what is going on? You know, because we see these plagues. We know that the, the scripture talked about plagues coming in the last days. And so when we look at these things, this bug, this bringing this disease is very hideous. You know, just look at this thing. You know, how it gets on the tree um, leaves and just get to eating and leaving this lava and it gets into the root system and just totally destroys this plant. And so, this is horrible. This is absolutely horrible. And I love me some orange juice. I don't drink it all the time. I kind of laid off of when I discovered how much sugar was in it. I mean, when I did drink it, I was drinking um, organic orange juice that was never made from concentrated. But I learned that I couldn't drink a lot of it. You can only drink very little of it if you drink it, you know, because it's just a lot of sugar in it, you know, from the concentrated orange juice. But look at these oranges, though. You don't want no juice from these, do you? <laughs> I mean, these are the oranges that they're talking about that have the disease. They are absolutely horrible. And so... Looking at this article here that's dealing with the orange crops, I want to share this one with you here. Um, this article is titled, The End of Florida Orange Juice. A lethal disease is devastating the citrus, the state citrus industry. So you mean to tell me Florida's entire citrus industry is being devastated by this disease? Yes, it is. It is completely being de devastated by it. Okay, and so we're going to read some of this. Um, bear with me one moment. Let me grab my glasses. This writing is very, very small. Okay, well, this is what we have here. It says, through... Through a tiny office window behind William Kennedy uh, desk, a row of sickly orange trees could be seen standing in the bright Florida sun. Their limbs were withered and leaves deformed and wood looked like rot. Wow. They were thriving once, but that was before the citrus disease that the scientists compared to HIV struck crippling hundreds of trees and forcing the family to let part of the grove decline, close, close its juice blending business, and put the entire operation up for sale. Wow, are you serious? So this disease is compared to HIV? Really? He says, I spent the last two years slowly dismantling my father's dream. Um, which is called C CB Citrus, established by his father, Bill, who died in 2016. It feels like crap. There are so many dead and dying Florida groves like C CBs that some ec economists have administ administered last rites 
to the state's nine billion citrus industry. So you mean to tell me that this this industry is practically gone? Practically, this industry is literally gone by a disease that's like HIV in oranges. I mean, do you hear this? Don't this sound crazy? Now, the scary thing about this is, you say yourself, okay, that's Florida. Okay, but guess what? There have been reports that it's now spreading to California oranges, which is the last area, from what I was reading, that uh, that oranges are growing in the United States. Mm. Now, what happens if it's spread to other countries, too, like Mexico and other places that may be growing oranges? It's kind of scary, huh? Let's look at this article here. This is what it says. United States citrus greening de detected in San Bar Barnino, Barnino County. Okay. And this is what it says. It says, a region in California have quarantined a citrus greening disease was found on a single citrus tree in San Bern Bern Bernardino County. This led to an expansion of already quarantined areas of citrus in the state. The CDFA said in a statement that the quarantine area spans 93 miles it will link up to existing quarantines in Los Angeles and Orange Counties. In total, the citrus trees quarantine represent 1,015 square miles. Man, are you, are you hearing this? 1,000 square miles? Another article I have here, listen to this. It says that, bring this over it says that four South California counties fall under citrus quarantine Los Angeles the citrus plant quarantine already in place in Los Angeles and parts of Orange counties was ex expanded Friday by the California Department of Food and Agriculture to include 93 square miles of San Bernardino uh, County. The DFA made the announcement after finding the disease. It's called Hong Longbing, also known as HBL for citrus greening in the single tree near Mount Clare. The area will link up with the existing quarantines. Okay, we read that pretty much in the 15, 15,000, uh, 15, I'm sorry, 1,015 square miles um, is this area. So basically, from what we're seeing here, it's just, it's amazing that, um, that this disease is affecting plants. I mean, you say to yourself, wait a minute now, I'm going to tell you something. You say to yourself, okay. When you hear about disease affecting people and animals, like bird flu diseases and swine's flu affecting swine and all this kind of stuff, and, and then you got diseases affecting people, you say, stuff, okay, but now these diseases are affecting trees, plants, and this ain't the first time I heard this because there was a, uh, some other trees that was in this one city. And I remember they were saying that they had to tear, they had to cut down all these trees in this one city because it had uh, um, contracted some type of disease that was killing these trees. And we talk about nice, beautiful trees they had along the road, pretty much. They had to get rid of all these trees. You see, so what is going on in the world that this is happening, right? Well, you got to understand who's behind it, right? We know Yah is behind this thing, right? Now, I got a scripture. We know that the scripture talks about um, that Yah 
was going to bring forth plagues and disease. Okay. But if you go to Revelations, look at this here in Scripture in Revelations. This is Revelations chapter 16. And this is verse 9. And this is what it says. It says, And men were scourged with great heat and blasphemed the name of Elohim, which have power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. So who has the power over these plagues? Hmm? Yahuwah. <laughs> you see that? Yahuwah has the power over these plagues. So these plagues come because Yahuwah sent them. Wow. So looking at this, this is enough to just make you say, Father, yeah, help us. Because, you know, we, we like to grow. Um trees the fruit trees and we have a few on our, our property here that we're trying to grow and 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 we and you last thing you want to do is see something happen to your fruit trees you know and so you, you say you said man father yeah please bless our fruit trees you know that they'll be able to um withstand anything that comes against them because of what's going on in the world today you see these diseases coming about and all of these kind of things and what happens if you eat these things right now, I know they said nothing happens if you actually eat them, or uh, I wouldn't want them. I mean, if it's killing the plants, why would you want anything from those particular um, oranges if it's killing the plants? I mean, this makes you don't even want to mess with orange juice. I'm just keeping it real. Looking at this, make you want to keep away from oranges because you got to ask yourself, well, man, how many of these bad oranges may have gotten in juice that you may drink, right? Mm. Food for thought, right? <laughs> Something to think about. But anyway, family, I just want to share that with you. And let's stay woke. On that note, I'm going to say shalom. sure to ring the bell to be notified of new uploads on this channel and also comment, share, like, and subscribe.